Mortal Kombat is extremely confusing. Which is why I took the entire timeline and condensed it into something a little more manageable. Kind of. I know it looks a little confusing there, but don't worry. I'm gonna try and explain it all in a way that hopefully makes sense, starting from the literal beginning of the Mortal Kombat universe all the way through the main beats. I've taken this massive story and just kind of thrown out the stuff that isn't absolutely necessary, so it was a little more digestible. So if I don't mention your favorite moments from the game, it was probably on purpose. Or if you happen to be a small Victorian child who doesn't know anything about Mortal Kombat and only watches my videos as a way to relax after 14 grueling hours in the factory, don't worry, I'm gonna try to explain it in a way that even you can understand. Just make sure when it's over, you get back to work. That steel's not gonna make itself. For now though, just do your best to keep up while I try to explain the co- There were a couple of entities that existed at the beginning of time. The first one is the One Being. Yes, he is literally called the One Being. He's like God, but without the six pack. Below him were the Elder Gods. They're just like any pantheon, like the Greek gods or whatever, just sitting on thrones and looking menacingly at whoever stands before them. And also kind of off to the side, there were the Titans, but they're not really that important. The main ones were these two, the One Being and the Elder Gods. Apparently the One Being is one big prick and the Elder Gods did not like him. So they fought him and he, exploded. He actually exploded into six different pieces, and all of these pieces became the realms of existence, like where people live, like Earth, that universe, that was a piece of him. Of the realms, you have Earth Realm, which is basically just like Earth, right? Imagine this as the normal world. And then they have the Nether Realm, which is their version of hell, right? This is where, you know, there's all the fire and demons and lava and my neighbor who died under mysterious circumstances after stealing my newspaper and evil and stuff. And then there's Outworld, which is like Earth pretty much, but evil, there's all evil people here and there's also magic and stuff. So it's, it's like Australia. There are some other realms too, but they're just not gonna fit in your little brain. So just focus with me. These are the main ones, ready? Earth realm, Outworld, Nether realm. Earth realm, Outworld, Nether realm. Right, so one being gets exploded. Each of these realms is a piece of him. Mortals live on it, everything is chill right there. The Elder Gods just kind of kick it for a while. And the Titans that I mentioned before just completely go MIA as they try to master the art of looking like Mr. Clean. We will check back in with them later. Right, so focusing in on Outworld, the evil kind of place, it was ruled by some guy named Onaga the Dragon King. Nobody's gonna remember the name Onaga, but that's okay because he kind of sucks, immediately dies by the hand of Shao Kahn. This is a guy you might recognize at least a little bit. Shao Kahn, very important throughout pretty much the entire story. Shao Kahn is the power hungry mega hater of this series and he really wants to merge his realm, Outworld, with another realm, one of the less important ones. And the Elder Gods, instead of saying no, said, yeah, absolutely, you can merge these realms together, but only if you win Mortal Kombat. They created a tournament where every 50 years, both realms would gather up their best fighters and pit them against each other. And if one realm beat the other 10 consecutive times spanning over 500 years, then that realm would be allowed to merge with the losing one. So basically if they win 10 Mortal Kombats in a row, they get to eat the other universe. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a time skip, okay? So Shao Kahn and Outworld win nine Mortal Kombats against Earth Realm. Pretty much meaning they only need to win one Mortal Kombat and then Outworld gets to eat Earth Realm. This is when the God of Thunder, no, not that one, Raiden steps in. He's supposed to be like the protector of Earth. I don't know where he was for the last 450 years, but he's here now and he's collecting fighters to fight Shao Kahn. He goes out and is able to round up a couple of people. The first one being Liu Kang who is a martial artist who can do a cool bicycle kick. And then on the opposing side, there's some fighters. The most important one I've got to mention is Shang Tsung. He's like an evil sorcerer guy who's like second to Shao Kahn or something like that. He comes up a lot later. For now though, it's just the Earth Realm and the Outworld people that fight in Mortal Kombat. They go through a bunch of different stages, but at the end, Liu Kang takes it home, gets a dub for Earth Realm, and completely resets Outworld. Shao Kahn is not happy about this, obviously. He just spent 450 years doing this, and this little guy showed up and bicycle kicked his way into the wind. So 
he challenges Earthrealm to another Mortal Kombat. He's about to do it all over again, and this time they're hosting it on Outworld. It was around this time that they introduced a few new characters. There's like a whole roster of them, so I'm just gonna quick fire name most of the main characters around this time, but you don't have to remember all of them. Jax Briggs, Kano, Goro, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Kung Lao, Baraka Obama, and Katana. All these people are just kind of fighting each other. There's, so, there's a lot of Mortal Kombat going on around this time, and this next tournament, you already know the drill. My boy Liu Kang pulls up, does that fire dragon kick thing, and wins the tournament again. So now Earthrealm has won two Mortal Kombats in a row against Outworld, and Shao Kahn is mad. Oh, he's so mad. In fact, so mad that he goes and invades Earthrealm anyway. I, I don't know. I don't know how he can do this, but he can just do this. He shows up with demons and stuff and starts invading Earth. Around this time, they're planning for a third Mortal Kombat tournament, and Shao Kahn is trying to assassinate all the Earthrealm fighters before the tournament. I really, I'm kind of confused about this part because if he can just like invade Earth or assassinate the fighters before the tournament, what is the point of the tournament? Why you gotta win Mortal Kombat and merge the realms when you could just take over both and the Elder Gods won't do anything about it? This same old song and dance, Liu Kang has been there, done that, he shows up and he wins Mortal Kombat again, a third time in a row. And also, they stop the invasion and everything is chill and awesome. For now. See, this is where things start to really pick up. You remember that Dragon King that I briefly mentioned before that Shao Kahn just kind of killed and took his place? Well, he's got a tomb where he's like dead in it and there's all these dead soldiers around. And Shang Tsung, a sorcerer, teams up with this dude named Quan Chi. Looks like that, that's Quan Chi. He's just a bad guy, that's really all you need to know. Basically, the two get together and they're just kind of like, yo, dude. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had like an undead army to control and stuff? Yeah, but like, where are we gonna find an undead army? So these two geniuses get together and their plan is perfect. The only thing that can stand in the way are two people, Shao Kahn and Liu Kang. But here's the problem, right? Liu Kang just showed up and won every one of these tournaments alone. There's no way you're touching Liu Kang. Damn. Liu Kang, yeah, he's dead. They also kill Shao Kahn, but it's not actually Shao Kahn. This is one of his clones, and he's just like off somewhere doing his own thing. Liu Kang though, once again, completely dead. After all of that stuff that he did, he gone. And then now Raiden, that god of thunder, the protector of Earthrealm, decides to go and meet with the Elder Gods and ask them to step in. And they kind of just say, nah, they don't want to do it, so. You know, tough luck. So Raiden goes off thinking he is that guy. You know, he's about to fix this whole problem. And now those idiots, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, trying to resurrect the Dragon King's undead army, somehow accidentally resurrect the Dragon King, who is mad. Dragon King actually wants to merge all the realms together and reform the one being and get like a bunch of power or something like that. And Shang Tsung and Quan Chi, they try to stop him, but they cannot. And so Raiden steps in and says, Fine. I'll do it myself. But Raiden decides to get this big ball of energy and just blast it out with the force of like a nuclear bomb. And that nuclear bomb of energy kills Shang Tsung, it kills Quan Chi, it kills Raiden. That's it. The Dragon King, fine, he's fine. And it's at this point that something kind of stupid happens. Uh, Raiden reforms into a being as edgy Raiden. He's got like, he's like dark now and evil and scary. And then some guy shows up and he's the one to kill the Dragon King. Raiden really don't have nothing to do with it. The day is technically saved by this random guy here. The Dragon King is killed. There's no merging of the realms. Everything is chill. Edgy Raiden gets to, you know, hang out with no one because all of his friends are dead, but He's good. Time continues after that. Edgy Raiden is hanging out uh, with nobody because all of his friends are gone, but Mortal Kombat's continue to happen. And out of the blue, this crazy powerful being called Blaze shows up and you'll never guess, but he got fire stuff. He's like a fire guy, Blaze. 
is. It's like the naming convention of a Sonic OC. Blaze is like this super powerful, unkillable being, and he's about to destroy the world. But then Shao Kahn shows up, because remember, his clone was killed. It wasn't him, he was just out on vacation, boating through the Bahamas. But he's back, and he fights Blaze, and he wins. And now he's like insanely powerful and he's gonna end the world. And that's when Raiden goes to fight him, but he's no match for Shao Kahn and he loses. And I know that this is confusing so far, but don't worry because what happens next will simplify it so much. Shao Kahn is about to literally end the world and Raiden sends a message back in time, all the way from here back to this point in the timeline. He sends the message to himself, and the message is, he must win. And now all this stuff that we just went over, gone, completely vanished. There is a new timeline. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the very first time reset in Mortal Kombat. Come on. We pick back up again in this new timeline, and it all kind of happens pretty much the same, except Raiden now has the knowledge from his other self from that first timeline. He sees the end of the world and now he has to try and stop it. So everything with the one being and Mortal Kombat, it all still happens. It all comes down to specifically this point where the timeline diverges and we enter a new era. Things go pretty similarly in here. You know, Liu Kang still crushes it in all the Mortal Kombat tournaments. Shao Kahn still goes to invade Earthrealm. Raiden now is trying to figure out what his future self meant by he must win. He does a couple things differently this time around and there's some details that get changed. For example, uh, Johnny Cage doesn't die this time and Sub-Zero is now a robot, I don't really know. A ton of people on Earth Realm's side end up dying again and only after they die does Raiden brain blast realizing what his future self meant. He thinks that the he in he must win means Shao Kahn must win Mortal Kombat. The idea is that if Shao Kahn wins, he's gonna try to merge the realms without having won 10 Mortal Kombats in a row, and the Elder Gods would then step in to stop him. It kinda sounds like a, a stupid plan, uh, or at least Liu Kang thinks so, because he just watched all of his friends get obliterated. Raiden says, we have to let Shao Kahn win, and so Liu Kang says, I'll do it myself. Liu Kang, you cannot do that. That is Raiden's bit. Good thing Raiden and Liu Kang are good friends and they would never let anything like this come between them. Damn! He gone. Gone. Very gone. How did they make it to where Liu Kang was so powerful in this entire point of the story? And everything after this, he's just a little wiener boy. How he just keeps getting destroyed. And it's never for a good reason. Raiden, baby girl, if you're out there, I need you to listen to me in this one moment. You make bad decisions. Raiden then goes on to fight Shao Kahn, but he loses on purpose. And he was right. The Elder Gods show up and blast Shao Kahn, and that saves the world. Kind of. Shao Kahn gets eviscerated and doesn't really come up anymore after this. And while the world is saved, a bunch of the people are dead again. Of course, though, time moves on. They continue to make more games, and a new antagonist shows up. His name is Shinnok. Shinnok's whole deal is that he was an Elder God, but I guess now he's not, and he wants to get this overthrow Outworld and Earthrealm. And how does he want to do it? How, oh how is he going to accomplish this goal? You'll never guess it. He wants an undead army. Oh, but who do you call on to get an undead army? Once again, an evil guy and Quan Chi team up together to create an undead army. But this time, they actually use some of the characters that have died before. So all these characters that you see on screen get revived kind of as undead evil versions of themselves. So now there's like a whole thing where the evil versions of people come back and Raiden has to gather up the remaining forces, which is really not that many people, to fight Shinnok and Quan Chi, and they have to, you know, stop them from taking over. Raiden wins, but he doesn't kill Shinnok, he traps him in an amulet. And I guess Quan Chi kind of just wanders off to look at birds. I don't know. And then get this, 10 years go by. Everyone's chilling for 10 years. Shinnok busts out of the amulet again, and then Raiden fights him again, and then he turns into the edgy version of Raiden again. 
These people are allergic to new ideas. All the events that I just mentioned with Shinnok are really only important for a couple of reasons. One, to explain how there are now evil versions of some of the classic characters, like Liu Kang is now and the evil Liu Kang, and he is the ruler of hell along with his girlfriend. They are the rulers of the nether realm. And that Raiden is now the edgy version of Raiden. It's pretty much everyone's evil now. It's better that you don't ask too many questions and just move on with those facts in mind. And now, just quickly, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Do you remember how I mentioned the Titans and how they had gone away? Well, boy, oh boy, did their work throughout all this time pay off. Behold! Kronika. I'm sure there are a bunch of titans, but Kronika is really the only one that comes up. She's got a lot of stuff going on, but to just boil it down really simply, she's like a time lady. She does time stuff. She got time powers, and she's also the mommy of Shinnok. She's Shinnok's little mommy. I wish she would be my mommy. Sorry. So Kronika shows up and pretty much says she believes Raiden is a danger to the timeline and, you know, the balance of the things and nature and stuff and wants to wipe him out of existence. And you know what? She does. Raiden just turns to sand. He's just gone completely. But when she does this, and you need to stick with me on this, when she wipes Raiden out of existence, a time storm happens, okay? Out of the time storm, these characters, all the way back here, 27 years ago, are transported to the future. So now, Edgy Raiden is completely gone, but there's a new young Raiden. So Kronika now, with Raiden out of the picture, her goal is to completely recreate the timeline in her own way. She calls it her new era. And obviously, you know, the, our main gang has got to band together and stop her from doing that. She needs a specific crown to be able to do it. And once she gets the crown, she can completely erase time pretty much. So on their way to fight Kronika, young Raiden finds the amulet from before, the one that Shinnok was trapped in, and it starts to corrupt his mind to the point where he's just doing shit, right? He's just attacking people. And Liu Kang does not like that. And so he attacks Raiden and they start to fight. Why was I just doing this? No, Raiden, please, I don't want to fight. It is during this fight that Raiden, I guess, realizes or has a vision of himself fighting Liu Kang in countless timelines, meaning that they've done this whole fight over and over and over again. Apparently, Kronika turned the two against each other in every timeline because those two, their power together, is the only thing that can stop Kronika. And so they stop fighting and they go to join their powers together to fight Kronika. But before that happens, the young Liu Kang is captured and he's taken to the evil Liu Kang. And evil Liu Kang sucks the soul out of his younger self. Fellas, is it gay if it's another version of yourself? And now, the young Liu Kang is dead again. Liu Kang keeps dying in these games in ways that just suck. He just keeps getting shafted, man. What the hell? But that's okay, because something awesome is about to happen. Evil Liu Kang is now all fired up. He's got the energy from his younger self, and he's, about, he's ready to go fight Raiden and kill him. And they get together, and they're about to fight, but something happens. It doesn't make sense why it happens. I still don't really get it, but Raiden merges himself with evil Liu Kang and younger Liu Kang's soul. So all these three combine into one big, crazy, awesome being, Fire God Liu Kang. Now he's got a bunch of awesome tattoos and his eyes are all white and stuff. Does it make sense? No. Is it awesome? Yes. Just accept it and move on. Fire God Liu Kang still has the memories of the evil Liu Kang. And so he pretty much knows Kronika's plan because evil Liu Kang was working with Kronika. And so he gets everybody together to go and fight her. This is when Kronika does something crazy and turns back time all the way to like the Jurassic era. See, Fire God Liu Kang is so powerful though that he kind of just says nah and is unaffected by the time moving and he's still there. And he fights Kronika and wins, he kicks her ass. And now, Liu Kang is just chilling with some dinosaurs. And this is when, and please, take off your hats, put your hands together for this special moment. Fire God Liu Kang takes the crown 
from Kronika and begins to build a new timeline. Give it up, everybody. Reset number two. Yes! Everything that I just explained to you, all of this stuff, it's all gone. It's all wiped out of existence. The only reason it matters was to explain Fire God Liu Kang. That's it. There is now a brand new timeline. In this new era that Liu Kang has built, we pan in on a humble blacksmith honing his craft until something strange appears to him. Kung Lao, where did you... Who... Who are you? I am Lord Liu Kang, God of Thunder and Fire. God of... Forgive my disrespect, my lord. Enough, Kung Lao. You are humble, not like the Kung Lao I knew. The Kung Lao you knew? A story for another time. I have chosen you as my champion, Kung Lao. We have work to do. You must be prepared. Trained. Trained? For what? And that was the convoluted timeline of Mortal Kombat condensed into what I hope was a digestible, or at very least, entertaining video. Feel free to leave any moments from the story that were cut out in the comments down below and maybe we can talk about it. And after you're done with that, click this big card right here to watch another one of the videos I've made. I put a lot of love into this content. And so I would hope that if you enjoyed this one, you'd really enjoy whichever one YouTube has selected for you here. Also, thank you for 60K. Uh, anyway, goodbye.